How many, uh, the how many first law person firms? I was represented was Jose Vera. They supposedly say he was a real professional. He did not help me at all. Okay. Um, you know, then I went with ben vendors and vendors, and uh, they're not really communicating with me either. I'm the one who's the one who has to be calling them, right. asking questions, and apparently they're not really, you know, they'll tell me, well, uh, you have to wait until someone gets in contact with you. I'll wait. It'll pass a week so forth, and they don't get in contact with me. I'm the one who has to keep on calling them. Then well, they're telling me that now this has to go to, um, uh, how do you call it, uh, a U.S., a United States district court now? Right. After the, after the administrative process has completed and you've, quote, exhausted that administrative remedy, end quote, there is a judicial review in the United States district court, which is an extremely serious place to be. I can tell you, United States District Court judges are very serious people. It's a serious place, and it's a serious process. And you have to be represented by somebody that you're comfortable with. Uh, I, I can tell you as a general proposition, I don't know if you've got, if you can have the kind of relationship uh, with this law firm that's necessary for you to be comfortable with them. I, I don't know. Maybe, maybe not now. Maybe you can in the future. I'm not sure. I would suggest that you don't just speak with them on the phone, that you set up a meeting and go down there and look at them face to face and get some answers to your questions. You certainly have a right to know and understand everything about your lawsuit, about your administrative process, and now the litigation in, in the district court. You have a right to know all that, and, and you're paying for that right as well. Um, as a general proposition, if a person can't be comfortable with the attorney or attorneys representing them, then they have another right. They have a right to seek other counsel. Ryan, do you have any, any suggestions other than that? The only other thought I would have is that not to just wait for uh, a meeting. If you keep making phone calls and you can't get a meeting, just, just go down there. They, they are your counsel. They are there to speak with you. Wow, you're tough. <laughs> I, I am very tough, but, but it's, 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 in a way, it's almost unacceptable. I don't know the real reason behind it, uh, but if you have a hard time setting up a phone conversation, setting up a phone call for a meeting, uh, just go down there in person. It's your attorney, and they should be there to speak with you. All right, so you've got a couple of suggestions from uh, three suggestions from us, three possibilities. One, call, the, call your attorney and set up a meeting. Or, or two, Ryan suggests going down there and setting up a meeting or having a meeting right now, face to face. Or three, seek other counsel. Those are the three possibilities. I don't want you to think for a minute that I think that it's a good idea for you to go to the United, to the United States District Court without an attorney on your arm. It's really important for you to be adequately represented. But on the other uh -huh. hand, it's also important for you to be comfortable with whomever it is who's representing you. Do you understand? Here, here's what I would like you to do now. I'd like you to um, think, about okay. the, think about the three possibilities that we've given you, come to a conclusion as to which one you want to pursue. You can actually pursue all three at approximately the same time, and then call us back in a couple of weeks and give us a progress report, because I'm interested in making sure um, that you're adequately and properly represented. All right? Okay. Okay. Thank you very much thank for you. calling Legal Help Live. Uh, thank maybe, you so much. Okay. Thank you. Maybe we can uh, make some okay. progress now. Bye-bye. All right. Bye-bye. Okay, folks, we've got to take our break. When we come back, you'll be calling us at 1-800-405-4222. You will be asking legal questions of Ralph. That's me. Ryan. That's, that's me. that guy. And uh, we'll see you in just a moment. Okay. We're back. Ralph here. Ryan there. You're calling us at 1-800-405-4222. That's a toll-free number, and that's how you get in to ask a legal question. We've had some fascinating calls today. We have a, um, a disability uh, question. A woman's losing her disability yeah. claim, and now she has to go to, to the United States District Court. We have a bunch of people poisoned by a pizza. Which sounds horrible. I, I hate poisoned pizza, and perhaps there's a small claims uh, court action there. Um, we have a, a we had a, a young man who um, um, is the only person in the apartment complex who's not allowed to have a pet. Well, he is allowed to have a pet. Just well, his landlord saying he's not allowed to have a pet. Yeah, we'll we'll see what happens. And then we had a very interesting call 
uh, by a woman who's uh, presently employed at a small company. She's afraid that the uh, owner of the company is going to sell, and when the owner of the company sells, um, the young woman will lose her job. And we had some sound suggestions for her as well. Um, so if you're out there and you've got a legal question, now's your time, 1-800-405-4222. Uh, but before we take any more calls, I do want to – I have a videotape. I heard. That I've seen that you haven't. So we're going to show the videotape, and I'm going to ask you questions about uh, liability and, uh, and, and stuff like that. We'll see how I do. Yeah. So are, are we ready on the tape? Okay. Let's, let's roll the tape. Here, here we go. Here we are. I hear the boat. This is what you saw. I saw a man in an orange vest uh, directing a boat coming into shore and never told the boat to stop. The boat reached the shore, hit the sand, and tipped over, dumping the driver of the boat onto the sand. I don't know how badly he was hurt, but it happened pretty fast. I saw something Did you see to that? anything like that? Something similar to that. Okay. Anybody liable? Any anybody on that tape liable for anything? Liable for anything? Well, the the driver of the boat, if he had borrowed that from a friend or for someone that wasn't <laughs> his, uh, he's got a lot of explaining to do as to how he took a boat and put it on the shore. Yes. Okay. Um, the especially if he can't get it back in the water. I don't think it's going to be back in the water for a No, that bit. that looks like a big enough boat. Yeah. Uh, the gentleman in the orange jacket. Uh, from that, he, he could be liable. Uh, some of the issues are, is what was he doing there? If he was staring at this guy coming out of a boat, doesn't know who he is, if he owed no duty to the person on the boat okay. to explain to him that he was getting too close or they should turn, then he, uh, if he had no duty to him, then there was no liability. And another issue that comes up with that is even if he did have a duty, there's, a, there's an assumption of risk or almost just an own comparative fault yes. of that if you're driving a boat and you're heading towards the shore, at some point common sense should kick in. And you, you should maybe turn the boat or slow it down. Well, let's say let's say that this guy's really seriously injured. We, we don't know, but but this is our tape, so we get to we get to play with it. Yeah. Now. Let's assume that this guy.